Okay, let us start with the first of this five that we saw before, the point cloud. As you can see on my screen, I open Cloud Compare. I will put the, long, the link sorry, just down below for you to be able to download the latest version for your specific distribution. It's open source, it's very nice. We will detail that a bit more when we really want to build things from scratch. For now, let's just see something. So this is what is called a sparse point cloud. We don't have a lot of point. This is a very small point cloud. Usually we have things that are much bigger. And I don't know if you can see, I will put the point a bit bigger. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a green point, and, and these are actually extracted from an SFM computation. So these are not part of the point cloud that represent the scene, but these are actually the viewpoints or the images center that were generated or taken by my camera. Okay, so if I wanted to have a multi-view data set to extract the same 3D from that, that will be the seven that I selected that I will show you after. So this is a point cloud, all right? Now, the second element that we want to check out is the mesh. So the mesh, here you can see textured mesh, so I will open it. It's not at the same position. It's okay, it should be, but it's not. This is a very ugly mesh. So basically, this is my computer. Uh, currently, you can also see uh, the software in which I was computing this 3D mesh. That's funny. Uh, let me highlight a bit more how it's structured. So I will not show the material, and I will show you the wireframe. So basically, these are all the triangles that constitute the mesh. Okay. So when we pass that to a 3D deep learning, we pass both the points and the edges in this um, in this in this kind of setting, and you can also pass the material on top. But that is an image that has a UV map, which will be able to be mapped exactly onto the mesh with some deformations. Okay, so this is the mesh. The third element is the voxel, and the voxel again it's not exactly at the same place. That is okay. This is how it looks like. So it's basically a bunch of cubes stacked together exactly where the points were. Okay, so you can see how it looks like. And the cool thing is, in this case, you see that each voxel has a number. So if I would like for you to see that, I will toggle all of my voxels and you can see exactly where they are. You could select any of them. So I will put that not visible and here, I could select this voxel or this voxel or this voxel and so on. All right. So this is the unit into the voxel data set. So there are the three data set that, has, that are 3D driven. Then let me show you in the Explorer the other data set that we have. So we talked about the multi-view data set, so the multi-view representation. This is what it looks like. So if I open this image, here, this is the first view. This is the second view, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. All right. So this would allow us, for example, to apply our deep learning prediction onto this set of images. Okay. And then try to find the correspondence onto the three, uh, third dimension. So that is our multi-view data set. And the last element, I just wanted to uh, show you what it could look like. It's the depth image. So basically, this is the first images that we saw as a depth image. So the closer we are to the center of projection of our camera, the more white it is. And the more far away we are, the more dark we are. And when there is black, it means that we have absolutely no uh, depth information. And then, depending exactly, we can take each pixel and each pixel will have this depth information, right? So as you can see. So these are the data set, or sorry, the how, how it looks like on the computer. And another thing is an auto image. So here you are not in a specific um, projection setting with a perspective camera model. You will have really, for example, this is a top-down view where we have a perfect mapping between pixels and a specific pixel size 
that we give to uh, each of our unit into our image and that's what it looks like so as you can see okay here the pixel size i think i put it to 20 centimeter or maybe may different but the, the scene is not scaled i didn't put any reference target so that's what you have this is what is at your disposal you i encourage you to play around with all of this another thing that i want to show you is the difference to is out or is in a bit uh, quicker into really playing with that it's the size of all the data set so a point cloud how does it look like really so if i show you the point cloud that we saw which is here i will zoom on it and this is the point cloud all right so if i select it you can see that i have 12498 points so that is a very small point cloud again now, if I were to check out the size of this point cloud as a pure ASCII file, so basically if I open that with my text editor, this is how it looks like. I have XYZ, RGB, and some features down after. And you can see that for each line describe a point. So X coordinate, XYZ, RGB, and some features. Okay? So this is what is fed to a neural network when we want to use that as input the data it's that you remember the first session that we had we have data enables so this is exactly what it is right so it's very simple but as you can see you have some kind of compression schemes from txt to ply you gain some some size and from ply to las which is really used in the geospatial and imaging industry you have a bit more compression as well right and same element goes with the mesh for example here this is a textured mesh so you have the object that describe the vertices the face and also the mapping with the texture files which is this one if you wanted to see what it looks like and this is what is mapped then onto the mesh that we saw just before right so there is another thing which is the voxel um, the voxel representation there is also with the voxel representation a file format that is used usually which is the dot vox that you will be able to open it in magica voxel for example that is one software that is uh, pretty nice and open source so that you can test that without further cost which i make sure all the time to uh, to try and 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 get to this um setting it's it's best to to, to learn new stuff and to be able to apply that and then going from open source to paid software that's just a, a small step but it's not a huge uh, gap all right next element that i want to show you so this is a platform um, that i developed with some uh, so, some friends and which we try to make it much easier to work with point clouds and meshes and things like this so the sparse point cloud would be here normally yes so this is the sparse point cloud um, then here you have the voxel keyboard but there is no lighting attached to it so that's how it looks and that's the mesh without any lighting right but as far as point cloud goes point cloud of a kitchen indoor kitchen that you can have play around with this is what this is an indoor data set this is aerial a drone so that is also what you get flying a drone so with photogrammetry and then you can use that for your experiments yeah this is also an indoor data set this is streaming so um, this is on french servers basically you need some time for all the points to load but as you can see that they're, they're in this point cloud is much bigger than what we saw uh, just before. And if you want to see a country scale, so for example, this is an extract uh, from the Ariel LIDAR campaign. That's just one tile, but you have the full French country as a point cloud. So there's a pretty big point, right?